Hey you guys, it's Tracy Pinace and I want to thank you for signing up to work the registers at one of our upcoming sales. I am actually at an event in Tulsa and I'm going to try to simulate uh, how the registers work so that when you get to the sale you're going to know exactly what to do. So some of the procedures are slightly different than what we do and I'll point those out to you as we go along. But this will give you a good overview so that you feel really comfortable once you arrive at the sale. So when someone comes up to their register, they're going to hand their Ikea bag to you. And the first thing you're going to do is separate things out by taxed and non-taxed. So within the state of Pennsylvania, clothing items are generally not taxed as well as shoes. And then most other items are taxed. So you will take the items out of the Ikea bag and put them into two piles or we often have rolling racks at the registers where you can hang the hanging items. Um, so I'm just sorting them out. So you can see this clothing item is non-taxable, but this is a costume and it is taxed. And you're going to have a complete list at your register so you know exactly what is taxed and what is non-taxed. So that is your first step, is to just throw it out. Uh, some shoes, regular shoes, are non-taxable, but things like cleats and dance shoes are taxable. So you're going to want to put those into your tax cut. Accessories are taxable, books, toys, games. So I've got my two piles. Throw my IKEA bag on the floor. Somebody's gonna come around and get it up. And now I'm gonna start seeing my oh, yeah. When you get to your computer screen, it should look like this, and we are ready to go. We're ready to begin scanning our non-taxable items. You can hear that beep. You will also see a green light. You also you want to make sure that as you're hearing and seeing those things that things are actually being recorded sometimes it'll make that noise but it doesn't pick up on the barcode so keep one eye on the screen you'll also note up here in the right hand corner of your screen is a counter so that shows me i've recorded one item so i'm good we recommend it that as you scan and bag you're doing it in increments of 10 so that you can keep track okay i've done 10 items 20 items 30 items and you, you know what you should have and what the customer should be charged for. Sometimes you, you miss a scan, so you need to go back in and rescan. Those are my only two non-taxable items. So I go up here to this box that is marked tax, remove the tax by clicking on the button and hitting yes. And now you'll see I'm on this kind of grayish blue line. I want to hit enter so that I'm on a green line, and when your line is green, you're able to continue. My next item is a pair of boys' Nike cleats. As we discussed, um, cleats, dance shoes are taxable within the state of Pennsylvania. Snow boots are non-taxable. We always get a lot of questions in the winter months about snow boots, uh, snow pants, ski jackets. All of those items are non-taxable, as are hats, scarves, and mittens. So I would have wanted to ring those up above with my non-taxable items. And now I have one last item, which is a book. And the customer is showing me, oh, they found another item that was stuck in the bottom of their stroller. So let's pretend that this item that they found is not actually scanning. I've tried a couple times and it's just not, for whatever reason, picking up the barcode. In that case, you're gonna manually enter the information, it's a nine digit code above the barcode and I hit enter. It's gonna ask me to verify that everything's correct. I hit okay. This is actually a little romper which should not be charged tax, but on the right hand side you can see that tax is being charged. 
So I want to remove that by hitting the um, yellow button and the tax is now gone. That's everything I have, so I'm ready to collect payment. I would go over here to collect payment and these are my options. I can accept cash or three types of credit cards, Visa, MasterCard, or Discover. It says Amex on here, however, we do not accept Amex and we do not accept checks. Or I could also take a gift card, which would be in the form of a coupon or JBF Bucks. So let's say this customer gave me $5 in a coupon. My balance due is $16.60. They're going to give me $15 in cash. I still have a balance due of $1.60. And let's pretend they're going to pay that balance in the form of a visa. So I hit save. And now it's going to print two receipts, but I still haven't charged the customer's card. You're going to get this black screen, which is new. This is a way that we're linking the credit card transactions to the POS. It shows me up here a balance of $1.60. What we've kind of learned this little workaround to make this actually function is if you just check, like click in this lighter blue box, it clears it. When I swipe my card, it should automatically start to ring. So when this is blank, that means that the, the two systems are communicating. My transaction was declined because I've been doing this video so many times, I keep running the same card. If your transaction would indeed be declined at the sale, you just want to ask the customer, do you have another method of payment? Um, if you have a problem with that, please do find me or one of the team leaders and we're happy to talk to the customer. Let's pretend that my transaction was not declined. It's now going to give me two more receipts. And those are the receipts that one we keep and the other the customer keeps. If for some reason, because this is relatively new for us with this black screen and linking to the credit card screen, if it doesn't work, the alternate method of running a credit card is just pulling up the calculator at the end and then entering in the amount of the transaction. So you would pull it up, it's going to be blank, and then you would enter in that dollar and sixty cents. So hopefully this will work because it'll save us um, a lot of time and keying errors by having that automatically populated. So the printer is going to print four receipts. You have your itemized receipts, one for us and one for the customer, and then one receipt that the customer will sign. And then you'll staple the receipt that they do not sign to their itemized receipt. If there are any yellow tagged items that they purchase, we staple that to the back so that they can go retrieve that with the security guard. We always bring up our yellow tag items last. You'll give that to the customer. Be sure to instruct the customer that as they leave, they want to keep their receipt handy because it will be checked at the door. And then finally, if the customer spends more than $50, we do give them a frequent buyer card, and that's just stapled to their receipt. And so on their next purchase, when they spend $50, they're going to get $5 off. So that's a nice way to end the transaction. Of course, you always want to be friendly and you want to remind them, you know, don't forget about our 50% off sale that's coming up and tell them the dates and the times and answer any questions that they may have. So again, I want to thank you for signing up to help us out at the registers and I look forward to seeing you at the sale.